I'm in Reseda, California, kind of near Calabasas, kind of near Tarzana. If you're in the area, you probably know who it is. And they have so graciously given me a location to do an oil change on this 765 LT. And I'm sure you may not have a 765 LT. So you think this doesn't matter, but it does because this is very close to a 720S oil change. And there are a few differences, but it's mostly the same. I'll weed that out. So I'm gonna show you the entire process, top to bottom, but I didn't bring my tripod. So it's gonna be a little bit different than I normally do. Let's get started. Okay, so one thing that is a little bit different on a 720, um, you've only got a couple screws that you can clearly see that are in there and then the whole thing uh, sits in place uh, like this other one up here, but they're a little bit different on the 765. You've got to manually lift the air brake up, which you do not have to do on a 720. Screw there, screw there, screw in there, screw in there. And uh, I believe this is just going to pop off uh, once we get all those loose. Those screws down here are for this piece. And there's two more down there. So we're gonna get those off to get this whole thing off, which will give us access to the filter and the fill points. All right, now we have flipped these two screws and these two you can see when you turn them, we've got a spring, just a little bit of a turn, pops right out. We've pulled this off, sits right up on here and that is the same on a 720. There's our oil fill, same place as a 720. So now we've just got to get those two down there and we can pull this guy off that's nice and toasty from driving it here. Now you get to this point and you think you've got it, but there's actual other ones down here. So once you loosen these up on both sides, these are a T25, which is a Torx. We'll get those out, which I can't do one handed and then pull this off. So we got this pulled out. We did have to move the air brake up again to give us a little bit of room to kind of pull it back this way and then out this way. On a 720, you won't have to do that. Now also noting on a 720 is you may not actually be able to see that as well. Uh, if I recall correctly, uh, you kind of have to come in through a hole a little bit differently. So it's a little easier access on the 765, but it's the same location on a 720. Um, that is a 36 millimeter. Uh, I've got a special socket for that. We are going to pop this loose just to vent the whole system along with this guy. It's gonna make it easier to drain. So one thing that is different on a 720, this little bracket uh, is specifically here to hold this piece for the 765. This is not in the way on a 720. You see, I got it in here. You can put the wrench in there and this does move a little bit, uh, but we got this loose. We're not taking it completely out yet. We're gonna drain it first, but we're venting the system here and here should be for a heavy flow day. And just like on every other McLaren, we have a boatload of 10 millimeters to remove to get this entire tray off. And also just like all the other cars, these guys are gonna be shorter. So make sure you keep those separated. They're about half the length of the other ones. This one and this one, uh, if they don't go in the other spots, it's because you have them in the wrong spot. These are a larger diameter. If you couldn't tell, but they are still a 10 millimeter head on them. Two on each side. So make sure you get those in the right spots. So we're gonna get all of these removed and then we can see what we're working with here and actually get to draining. Notable things while you're doing your oil change and doing your drainy drainy and all that and whatnot, you should look for coolant leaks, oil leaks, any other type of leaks. Now, the heads of these bolts have got some oil on them and believe it or not, that is normal. Uh, it does happen. It happens quite a bit. It happens on the 3.8 liters as well as the four liters. No cause for concern there. This, I'm not exactly sure. 
Uh, that might be a clean and see if it reappears uh, from that gasket right there. And we did notice that on the bottom of the tray, there's some coolant residue. And where that is coming from is the water pump seal right here. Now we don't know if that has stopped leaking. Uh, there's nothing wet, so at the very least, it's not a very large leak, but it is worth cleaning this off and seeing if it reappears. Um, I would not go ahead and replace the water pump gasket or anything like that as a result of just that, uh, but is something to look for. Uh, check all your hoses, make sure your clamps are good. Uh, these are different clamps that are much better than the ones that have been on previous cars. So since we've checked all that out, we can do our drain. We've got drain plug here, turbo line here, turbo line here. Uh, There's going to be an eight millimeter head on this. This is a T50 on the drain. And then we've got the sump tank that is over here, right here to be specific. And uh, that guy is going to be a 19 millimeter. Uh, we're going to drain that one last. You don't have to do it last, but we're going to. Uh, these three, you can drain all at the same time. We've got the engine plug drained. Uh, now this one does go to the same passage, but this is the one that has got the cop ring on it. So that is the only one that we are going to drain. Uh, you see this passage is actually draining out through here anyway. So don't touch that one, no need to. Uh, now we are draining one oil line now. You will get quite a bit. These turbos will actually hold about a half liter per turbo. So that's a full liter if you don't uh, drain these oil lines. And I know what you might be saying, if we pull this one and it's draining, it's draining from over here too, and drain from right there. It doesn't work that way. You do have to pull that. You will get quite a bit more out of that guy. The initial pull, you get quite a bit, but you do have to pull both of them. You also wanna replace these O-rings and I'll put the size of those on screen there. And uh, then these guys will be good to go after all this is drained. It does take about 15, 20 minutes to get a proper drain on these. Then we're gonna drain the sump. You do not want to forget to torque any of these things. So we've got 18 foot pounds here and seven foot pounds on each of these, 10 Newton meters, 24 Newton meters on that. So we're gonna get these torqued, drain our sump. We have drained that and replaced the crush washer and we will tighten that to 13 foot pounds not a whole lot remember we're going into an aluminum container with an aluminum crush washer you could also use copper uh, but aluminum can strip out very easily so don't just kind of wing that actually torque it everything is drainy drainy everything is torqued and now we can put this panel back on and all of the 10 millimeters. Now, if you actually torque these to the factory spec, that's something like seven foot pounds, they're going to fall out. Like it happens from the factory, they fall out. Uh, so you don't have to worry about torquing all of those so much. Uh, I usually use like a quarter inch impact or my electric wrench and just kind of go till it goes and then it's done. It's around maybe 20 foot pounds. Never had one fall out when you do that. Never had a problem with stripping them. Now you might notice none of these bolts are actually in all the way. They are just kind of hand tight and started. 
You never want to put any of these completely tight in because you might have to make micro movements around here to get them in, especially on these, because if you got any of these tightened in, these will not line up and you're gonna have a bad time. So I'm gonna go back and tighten all these, get it on the ground, start the fill procedure. said this one has got the little bar across here 720 does not have and also note that you'll have to use a longer accession on 720 because you kind of have to go in and this if you use a flex head on your 3 8 uh, that does make it a little bit easier depending on your uh, extension like it's not quite right but for this guy what we're gonna have to do is move this up and slide it out this way and we're going to throw paper towel under there so we don't drag anything across the car and ta-da, we can go to our drain and uh, get the rest of it that's gonna sit here in the bottom. We're gonna pull the filter out. There's an O-ring right here to replace, an O-ring right here to replace. Those do come with the new filter. So we've got those down here. And uh, this one is the same one that is used by McLaren. It doesn't say McLaren on it. And fun fact, if you take it to a dealer and have them do it, they're probably not gonna put an actual McLaren one in it. They're probably gonna put one of those in it. And on the filter, it is going to be 18 foot-pounds, which goes in the same way it came out. If you're at this point, you should know how to do that. There should be some resistance uh, when you go to put this in. If you try to spin it by hand and it doesn't, your O-rings are probably not seated correctly. You also want to lubricate those O-rings uh, and make it easier to come in and when you're moving tools make sure you hold the tool and bring it out so you're not dropping it onto the car because that's a bad idea i've already dumped five liters into this and so this one is empty so what i'm going to do for the remainder of what i've got is i'm going to pour this one into this one as a measurement so i can just dump everything that's in here into the car and have my precise measurement you do not want to overfill this because then you have to drain it from the sump or somewhere and it sucks to do. It'll also be really hot. So you wanna make sure you get this right the first time. This one is five. We're going to do another one and a half. Uh, 7.8 liters is what this whole system will hold. I'm gonna start with about six and a half, which I know is going to come up low, but I want to do this several times in checking to make sure we don't overfill. All right, you can see that I have taken some out of here, put it in here, uh, just a hair above one and a half, but we should be good to go. Now, when we go to pour this in the car, something that you want to make sure you do is go kind of slow with it. We don't want to just dump it all right in there. We don't want to get any air bubbles. Uh, this can cause a problem. So we're just going to do a slow pour, uh, make sure it doesn't build up, no air bubbles, and then we should be good to go for the first check. So that whole procedure, and we're probably gonna have to do this at least three times, maybe four. Now when you go to check the level, you do need to put this cap on. So don't forget to put it on, put it on all the way, make sure it clicks. If these arrows are not pointing forward, it is not clicked. If it's not clicked in, you might find that it might kind of go and then you have oil everywhere and you're gonna have a bad time. So this being a 765, it is loud, so you're just gonna have to deal with me yelling at you. Uh, once you go into where the messages would be using your control stock here, we're gonna go down to oil. We're going to pull to confirm. Conditions not met. Why? We've gotta hit the brake and hit the gas at the same time. So hit the brakes, says apply throttle. We apply the throttle. Now this oil has gotta be uh, to around 196 degrees uh, on the P14 platform, which is your 720-765. So this is going to hold 2,000 RPM to get this oil warm enough. Then it will start our countdown and give us the actual oil level. 
So at 194 degrees is when this kicked on. It went from gray to green. And then we started to get our countdown. So once this time's out, I'm not gonna bore you with all of this. This will pop up and it's probably gonna pop up red and say that it's low because I intentionally went a little bit low so we don't overfill. Remember, the only way to fix an overfill is to drain it from the sump or the motor. As expected, timer went out, too low. That's our gauge of how much we have to add. I'm gonna start with 0.2 liters until we get it. Ah, now that I can actually uh, hear me, uh, we are going to add 0.2 liters and uh, that should bring us into a reading of something. So we're gonna add 0.2 from low level until we get a reading. So the first time we did it, we added 0.2, it came up low. I've added 0.2 a second time. And we'll see how this comes up. are still too low so we're gonna add 0.2 again now I know this sounds extremely tedious and it is but I don't think you understand how much I don't want to overfill this thing still too low another 0.2 Okay, minimum. So now we're going to add 0.1 at a time until we hit that target. We are still on minimum. We're still gonna go about 0.1 more. And we're still at okay minimum. Uh, the scale on these, I think, might want to add a little bit more at a time than we're doing, but again, I am not overfilling this thing. So we've gone through, we've got the oil at an okay level, and it was at the bottom of okay, so we added a little bit more just to make it towards the top of okay. Uh, it doesn't actually say how much to do, it just says okay. And if you check the owner's manual, it doesn't really tell you, it just says if it's in the green, it's good. Uh, so we're good there. Now we can put this whole thing back together. So I'm gonna get these panels in, get it wrapped up and it will be good to go. Another note, uh, when you're adding oil here, these fans that run uh, on the radiators in the back, they shoot air up this way a little bit. So if you're just pouring without a funnel, it may spill a little bit over here. I'll get blown around a little bit. Uh, so make sure you use a funnel for that purpose and that purpose alone is to block the wind uh, while you're filling it. So we've got this panel back in, we've got the two that are down there and it's just a push down and twist and those are secured. Uh, same that'll happen on these guys, there's two of those down there. And again, the two back here, you, we do have to uh, have the air brake up to get those two in, which on a 720 is not a problem, but on this car it is. Uh, so we've moved this back down uh, because if you move this at all from the original position, when you go to start the car up, it will freak out and it will not like that. And you might have to do a calibration, it's a pain in the butt. So we got those in there, those in there, these other guys, the torques, those are in place. And now we can set in the panel that goes on top here and then put these screws in that hold that here. The other ones, again, are right there. Uh, that is different than the 720, but for 765 viewers, that's what we have. This piece we've got back in, everything is all in well. And the oil change on this 765 LT is complete. We've still got to reset the oil service that's on that and you do have to have a special tool for that i have that tool i'm not going to tell you which one i have but you do have to have one of those tools to reset it so if you have mcmedics come out and do it uh, we can clear that or you can go to a dealer they can clear that there's a few other tools that do that you might be able to find somebody that can clear it or you can cheat the system cheat and just set your calendar back one year in the car and that's another way you can make it go away but we're gonna do it the right way and clear it using my fancy tool that i'm not going to tell you about and the process is the same as a 720 more or less short of the things up here that are just slightly different it should be blatantly obvious uh, when you go to do it yourself 
If you learned from this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed for all the other videos. Go back on all my historical videos and all the other notification bell and all that other garbage that they always say all the time. And I'll see you in another technical video.